Yep. Welcome back, guys. Is- ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do. That's yeah. how. That's how you, you get to be. Make a, it exciting. That's how you get to be a real YouTuber. Ba 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 ba. Um. All right. Well. <laughs> On that note, welcome back. Well, now we're here. Now, now we're here uh, to our holy crap! This is our sixth episode, Brent. Can you believe it? Mm-hmm. We really appreciate we're all right you guys along. that uh, that have tuned in, listened, watched the podcast. Really, really appreciate the uh, the nice words that some of you have said, and we don't appreciate the not nice words others have said. I'm just kidding. We actually haven't gotten any negative feedback, so <laughs> we're probably not doing something right. Um, yeah, we need some of that. <laughs> we need, need some. Some criticism, I guess. But uh, anyways, no, seriously, we really appreciate all you guys that have logged in. Um, so the the first thing that we wanted to start off with was an update because we still are not on Apple, Apple Spotify, or, or no, sorry, Apple Podcasts. Um, Brent, where are you and Tim at? I mean, didn't you, you hung out with him the other day. Like, where did we, where did you leave? We had we had a brunch, avocado toast, um, an upside down latte. It, it was it was great, but we got distracted talking about the food. So, uh, anyway, but seriously about Apple Podcasts, I am working on it. But Tim has sent me to the Apple ID support, and they are telling me that it's Apple Podcast support that I need to go to. Oh, but then. Oh, Tim's wife at podcast support told me I need to go back to Apple ID support. So basically I'm stuck in a holding pattern where both people are telling me between Tim and his wife, the other person. Yeah. And it's a, it's a scary place to be. All right. Well guys, we are working on it. (laughs) We're working on that. Uh, But good news. We did get Google. The newest, the newest thing is we did get verified, whatever to get on Google podcasts. So we're on that now. Google Play? What's but it called? We prefer you listen slash watch them on YouTube anyway. But yes, it is on Google Podcasts, Spotify. I don't know if there's a separate podcast deal for Spotify, but it's on Spotify. All right. Well, there you go. And, and we do put up some visuals as well. So even if you do watch on Spotify, uh, you know, we've got some stuff today that we'll have some visuals on that'll pop up. So if you do uh, watch it on or listen to it on Spotify and then hop over to uh, YouTube to watch it and see the captions or i don't know whatever we're going to pop up when we're talking about them so yeah. trying to make them a little more interesting so you don't have to look at these things yeah these ugly Ooh. mugs the whole time i shaved for this can you can you tell you probably can't it looks great <laughs> thanks you well i mean you you look great you don't have the beard going but i've never been able to do you not grow a beard in the this winter is, this full strength right here wow yeah. What's the thing from Joe? What's the thing from Joe Dirt where he says like, "Oh, does it grows in all redneck like that?" <laughs> you remember that? That's what I have. I I get it growing in all redneck like this. So I like it. <laughs> pro tip. All right. So starting off the podcast today, we've got a couple episodes to talk about, or a couple things to talk about. We've got uh, what is coming up. Uh, we've got a couple things in the industry that are coming up in the next couple uh, coming months, the beginning of the year here in the first quarter. So we kind of want to talk to you about those. We have the trips that we are looking forward to in 2022. Uh, that'll be pretty quick, but just kind of wanted to do a quick uh, thing on kind of what we're excited about for 2022. On that same note, we've got the new products that are, we currently know about that are coming out for 2022 that we're excited about. We're not going to hit on every single new product that we know of, just some of the ones that we think it'd be a good talking point. And we got a couple viewer questions that we're going to answer at the end. Again, really appreciate the viewer questions. Um, some of them are just kind of, Hey, talk about this topic. Some of them were really specific. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions or topics that you do want to see covered, please reach out to us. You can reach out to us either DM on Instagram at ramble and fly. You can comment on a video on YouTube. Or you can uh, knock on Brent's door. He will answer uh, with avocado toast. Um, so those are mostly the three ways to get in contact with us. And if you're lucky, we'll get an upside down latte. <laughs> <laughs> Come hang out with Brent, get some avocado toast, some upside down lattes, and and then and then <laughs> tell us about your topic. All There's right. Probably a real name for that. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep this thing on track. <laughs> what, do, what's the difference between that and that pineapple upside down cake? Couldn't tell you. All right, viewers, we need you for that. 
I don't know. Help us out here. Bring, bring Brenna a pineapple upside down cake. All right. Starting <laughs> off with what we got kind of coming up in the industry Q1. Um, the first thing that we can think of is a. Yep. Now, for those of you that don't know, that Colorado trip where you guys were filming Short Bus 3, that's where you and I met. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Look at that. First time we fished together. The origin story. That's right. Heart touching. <laughs> Worst day of my life. <laughs> it all spiraled. So, uh, uh, next, the yes, next event that's coming up is the Denver Fly Show. I'm sure there's others that are coming up in between, but ones that we want to bring up. Denver Fly Show, that is going to be February 11th to the 13th. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers will be there. Rod brands, real brands, um, packs, all the good stuff. Are you going to be there? Go if in. the people come, can they see you? I will be there. I'll be at the G. Loomis booth. Yes, hmm. come say hi. Weird spot for you to be, so, but okay. Strange, yep. <laughs> now, we'll have the we'll have the full line of rods there. So, if you, if you want to come cast any weird rod that your shop might not carry... Uh, we'll have it there. So nice indoor casting pond. You can go cast against all the Sages, Winstons, all, all the other brands around and have some fun on the pond. It's probably your best opportunity to get all of the rods in one place with a plethora of lines. Usually scientific anglers in Rio are there with full runs of demo lines. So you can come in and, and try out all the different stuff. So it's a pretty, pretty fun event for the public. Um, and yeah, you just get to see all the new products. Do people actually test cast the Euro rod? Is that like I'm, I'm gonna have I'm gonna do a long distance Euro casting contest. That'd be fun. But don't even bother because Lance Egan's gonna be there and he'll just crush you guys. <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> that I don't know if he'll be there. I hope he is. That'd be a really fun video to have. Uh to watch someone put, like go out in a parking lot with like the euro rod and like test cast it like, yeah oh. i'm serious i'm gonna try and do a long distance <clears throat> casting contest with euro rods okay so oh leave me out of it <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't oh, i could i couldn't win a long distance test cast rod with any rod even if you gave me a spay rod and you had a overhand i still would lose <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. last thing I don't think that's true <laughs> last thing in the uh in the industry is iftd is actually in salt lake this year uh and well not the first time it's in salt lake but it is in salt lake this year march 30th through april 1st uh of this year are you are you gonna be there are you coming for that one for the g it should be i should be at that one okay. um i'm not sure if loomis will have a booth yet or not we will update you in the next episode about that okay well I'm not having a booth or anything, but I was planning to go and get some upside down lattes or, you know, might hit up some avocado toast and then head over there. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see what's happening. But I don't know. We were plan planning to be there. Maybe you and I could be there, shoot a podcast from the event. I don't know. We'll That'd see. be fun. Go talk to a bunch of strangers. Yeah. I love talking to strangers. <laughs> so uh, oh. the next, oh, was you, did you have anything else on the uh, Q1 events coming up? No, those are the big ones. Um, all right. What we're looking forward to in 2022, um, we just kind of wanted to mention a couple of trips that we kind of had planned, some different spots we were going to go fish. Um, I mean, we've got, we, <clears throat> we have a really hefty film schedule on, on the docket for next year. I don't I actually know if it's all going to make it, but uh, Brent, why don't you start out and kind of let us know what you're, what are you pumped on for next year? Yeah. So, I guess I'll do I'll do my top three, okay. um, which is kind of my wish list. Uh, I I made a huge mistake last year and promised a friend I would go to Bolivia with him to fish for Golden Dorado. So I got to figure out some way to fund that, but uh, that would be Oof. probably number one on my list. That's high on my list. And then, yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, number two, which. This year, more than years past that I've seen, has been blowing up is the Mag Bay Striped Marlin. Yeah, yeah. Down in Baja. That looks really cool. It does. Um, I've been down to Baja to do rooster fishing, but never gone over to Mag Bay, the other side of uh, yeah. the peninsula. So that one looks sweet. Hmm. How can you argue with giant fish eating 
big flies. The, I mean, and, the tacos there are probably just fire, I would bet. Yeah. It's actually funny. The, the place I go in Baja, their delicacy is hot dogs. Oh, I, could, you, I could use like, some Baja Everyone hot dogs. in this town has crazy hot dogs. They wrap Ooh. them in bacon and put asada on top Sheesh. of them. And... Sheesh. <laughs> yeah. Sounds anyway, good. enough of that. Uh, I would say I'm going to bump it up to four because I have to include a redfish trip because that's now an annual thing for us. But uh, I really want to go fish the Green River again in Utah. I haven't. I always say I'm going to go do it, but I haven't done it much. And I want to go swing some flies down there. Yeah. So okay. there's my top four. Wow. Um, I didn't know, but I'm going to add the hot dog spot to my list. I don't know about the fishing at all or whatever, but I care about the hot dogs there. Uh, so I want to go to that yes. hot dog spot. Um, so it, as you may know me, I'm as I do love bass. I, I love warm water fishing. I like cold water fishing for trout. But I don't get to do it enough to say that I'm really that big on it. But I am pretty. I do have a pretty severe tarpon and permit addiction. That's really the only thing to describe it as is an addiction. Yeah. Um, so my uh, thankfully, uh, I'm just kidding. That was extremely sarcastic. COVID canceled my tarpon trip. Uh, there's something about how they didn't want the tarpon and the, the tarpon hadn't quarantined for long enough or whatever. I don't know. Mm, there's a thing. Yeah. A due date about in China. I couldn't go, re- I couldn't go tarpon fish last year. And uh, that really got me bummed. And I've been thinking about it since we have a, uh, a DIY uh, bone fishing trip that I'm pretty excited about. Kind of curious to see how that goes. Uh, red fishing with you as well. It's got a, another, I think I'm probably going to end up going red fishing at least twice next year. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, one in Texas and one in Louisiana. And then I've got, uh, planning to go back to Canada because Canada ruined a trip for, or COVID also ruined a trip to Canada for me last year, uh, which is weird because I thought that the COVID was from China, not Canada, but Canada closed or something and you couldn't fish because there was COVID in the water i don't know how that works but um yeah they they the can't fish have a hard time wearing masks yeah they can't i've never seen a fish wear a mask and i think that <laughs> the sjw's need to get on the fish for that because they're not social distancing you catch three or four of those nope. things out of one hole and that's six feet long i, mean, I don't get it so yeah daisy chain anyways. of 100 tarpon yeah what are you guys doing out here <clears throat> anyways there we go. Some, uh, I don't know. We, we kind of had a comment about that. Wanted to see uh, some folks said they were interested in knowing what we were looking forward to this year as far as fishing trips go. There you are. So it's, uh, it's on our yep. docket. Some fun ones for sure. Yeah. Hopefully we'll, we'll have some cool pictures and stuff coming from them. But... Yeah. Those hot dogs. We, we'll send you guys pictures of those hot dogs. We'll post them up. I'm going to put, you guys will probably already have seen, but I'll probably have put up a, a bunch of photos from the hot dog train down in Mexico. It's a train. Maybe I'll Hold do up. that right We got to pause this. Where's the hot dog train? Yeah, I'm gonna put the hot dog train right here and give you a 30 second gallery. Of the hot dog. All right. So <laughs> the other thing we had coming up was uh, we've got some new products oh hold on we sw- we f- somehow we flip flop these i think okay whatever we've got some new products coming up for 2022 obviously there's not all the new products but some products that we wanted to talk to you guys about uh, some things that we were just excited about uh and thought they would kind of fit the podcast so uh brent what do you have on the what do you have on the list for stuff you're excited about for 2022 uh the first one and in no particular order of importance, uh, the first one we have listed is the new Sims PG-13 waders. Uh, no, I, I, think they're the, I think they're the G3s. G3s. Yep. I read that wrong. <laughs> they uh, they look pretty sweet. I think they, they found a new Gore-Tex material, and it's a, like a three-layer Gore-Tex on the lower, like the legs. It's supposed to be really pinhole resistant, abrasion resistant, uh, all that good stuff. And then they went with a four layer material up top to make it a little bit more comfortable and it's supposed to breathe a little better. So 
can't complain on improvements in waders. That is one thing in fishing that is always, always troublesome. So where'd they find um, the, where'd they find the new Gore-Tex from? Was that just in the new update? They just, they just dropped it or. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to ask know. Mr. Gore uh, where, where, it's, where it's from. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, next on the list would be there's this company called Blue Line Flies. Oh. Sounds like they have some new stuff coming out. Yeah, I I don't know anything, nor do I care. But right, uh, well the people don't. But <laughs> I'll tell, tell us about the people that. don't care either. But I'll tell them about it. Um, so we're we're bringing out our biggest fly drop since number one. I've been working a lot this year on uh, tying, developing research, some R and D stuff. Uh, <laughs> God damn. You've been fishing a lot. <laughs> uh, I fish a lot. Um, so anyways, we're bringing out 30, right around 30 new patterns. That does include colors, So, but it's like 15 to 20 brand new patterns, some new colors and sizes in those. Um, we're really excited to bring those out uh, this year. So huge, huge update. What's the one you're most excited about? Can you tell us about it? You know what? There's, there's two that are coming out that are actually both Bryant's ideas. Uh, it's, oh. I, I, they're his ideas. I tied him. He was like, Hey Adam, you need to make me this fly, this style fly. And, uh, there was a lot of R and D honestly that went into those, but there's two flies that came out of, uh, him and I fishing together last year that I'm very excited about. One is a bait fish pattern that has done very well and has caught me. My two best fish last year came on this fly of, or tw- of 2021. My best smallmouth and my best trout last year came on this fly. Those are the two uh, fish you caught last year? Those are the only two fish that I caught, and they both accidentally ate this fly that I threw at them. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we've got a new crawfish pattern coming out. I'm uh, Admittedly, I do not fish a lot of crawfish. Do you ever fish crawfish for trout? Very occasionally. I always yeah. see them on, <clears throat> on the rivers I fish, and I, yeah. I just haven't. I probably don't know how to fish it correctly. It, it is interesting that I f- very, very few trout fishermen will fish crawfish. But if you look in the rivers around your, your trout river, I bet you will find them. Uh, but anyways, there's a ton I, of them. Yeah. There's a ton. I admittedly don't fish them. I honestly, I think because I'm kind of too hyper and fast paced and you, you know, you got to fish them real slow and like fish them on that mend jump bump thing. And holy crap, they are effective though. And, uh, this fly was one of our absolute best performing flies last year. I mean, it, <laughs> it slapped the small mouth and I admittedly have not had a chance to fish them enough for trout, uh, yet, but we'll be coming up. And I actually think I might come out with a smaller version of it as a trout fly, but then on the flip side, not very many people fishing for trout. So I don't know. We'll see. But those are the two most, uh, the two ones that I'm the most excited about. So, I'll see if I can get some spy shots of them and put them in the in oh, the yeah. screen right here. Just like bl- you blur them out or something. We do. Oh, we are bringing out some fl- uh, some top water flies, not necessarily poppers, but top water flies. Uh, we didn't want to create a popper. Just there's the market's flooded with that. I, you don't need a popper for me. Go somewhere else. But. If you do want to fish some other topwater streamer patterns, we do have some foam floating streamer patterns coming out as well that we are very excited about. I've had a lot of customers and folks asking about getting something like that. So we're really excited to bring Sweet. those out. Awesome. Uh, next on the line <clears throat> is the G Loomis NRX Plus T2S the that's tournament two piece series. That's too many word letters behind. <laughs> yeah, it's getting it's getting long. We need <laughs> something. If, else. if you haven't, <laughs> we just call it the T two S. But I want it to be specific so you guys knew. There we go. Uh, yeah, it is a strange rod. It's the one Adam and I were talking about last episode, I believe. That you like to overline. I like the true to line weight. Yes. Um, it's a two piece saltwater rod. But it's really. But it's, when you told me it was a two piece rod, I, I was like, Oh cool, whatever. And the box showed up at my house and I was like, what in the world is going on here? Tell, tell the people what is, what is weird about this two piece. So the, the reason we made it two piece is because 
a lot of our serious guides really like the one piece rods. They don't come apart. They're a little more durable. They're lighter. Um, overall, it's just a better package to have a one piece rod, but shipping them is so expensive and dealing with any warranty issues because they do happen occasionally. Uh, it gets a little bit out of hand. So we needed to find a way to ship a one piece rod more effectively. And basically our solution to that was to make the butt section of this T2S rod. I think it's 22 inches long. It might be 18 inches, but anyway, uh, the butt section is very short. And then the tip section, which is essentially the, the top three sections as a one piece, um, it's, you know, seven, seven and a half feet, give or take. Um, now that gets us under the critical shipping length and we can keep the cost low, but why not just cut the rod in half and ship it as a two piece there? We can, we can go a little into the weeds, but I'm not going to go too far. Basically to make the connection between the two rod pieces, it takes a lot of extra weight and that is one of the weaker spots and the harder spots to make up taper changes in base. I mean, you've got two different sets of carbon on top of each other. It creates a stiff point in the taper. Um, so it makes it a little harder to work the tapers around. Basically we can slam the, all the weight from that ferrule connection down towards the, the butt of the rod where it doesn't make as big of a difference in swing weight. And that's the stiffest and thickest part of the rod. So it's not going to be near as much of a durability concern. Um, it actually still passes all of G Loomis's QC tests on, on the 12 weight, uh, the, there's a whole scale to this, but on the 12 weight, you can hold the, the butt of the rod vertically and pull the tip straight down 24 inches past the butt of the rod and it shouldn't break. So hopefully that's never happened. Shouldn't. shouldn't. I mean, if you <laughs> ding it with a fly or something, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you damage it beforehand, but if it's, if it. the rod's in good shape, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. We wanted to keep the swing weight down low, keep it really durable, but still have all the benefits of a one piece rod and not have to charge you guys like 1200 bucks for a rod just from shipping. So. There are a couple redfish swimming around in Louisiana right now that don't like that rod. <clears throat> yeah, I love you... it. <laughs> yep. I... That thing is a weapon. Oh gosh. I love one piece rods. Every one piece that I've ever cast, it's so much better than a four piece rod. And and I mean, you know, some of you guys, you know, that like to, may not be able to carry them and, and I get they're not for everybody. And I'm not saying everyone should just throw away four piece rods. But nowadays with like, you know, the big sky rod box, the river quiver, the Titan rod vault, whatever that thing is now. And or you're, you know, flats fishing, you have a skiff that you could carry it in or something. There's some way that I think a lot of people could figure out how to carry a one piece rod. It obviously would cost a lot more to, you know, you'd have to buy a whole rod rack or something for this rod, but holy yeah, cow. They or are a so flat much, skiff. Or you have to buy a flat <laughs> skiff. But, I mean, but that's so worth it to be able to carry the one piece rod with you. So. Yeah. Um, or a drift boat, I guess. They are. If you're, you know, yep. if you're that kind of guy. But yeah, I, I love one piece rods, but this two, this T2S was so cool because it was, it felt like a one piece, but yet you still, it was definitely manageable. It doesn't, it, I mean, it really didn't feel like it, but like being able to take off, you know, what'd you say? 22 inches or so? I think it's rock? 22 inches. Yeah. Like I was able to fit that in my wife's sedan. Like you remember yep. seeing it in Louisiana, like <clears throat> I took the piece off and like, but if it wasn't removable at the bottom, I couldn't have fit it in the sedan. Right. Well, and the right. other cool thing is it should cost the same amount to ship that rod as it does a four piece rod. Really? So, yep. Hmm. It's very, very close. <laughs> very so, cool. Man, that, no, yeah. it, it really is cool. So, uh, are there any plans to come out with that in like a freshwater series? There's a, there's a lot of guys that want it. Um, it's it's quite challenging when you're when you're building really thin diameter rods because they get even thinner when you go to a one piece because you don't have to build in thickness to get the the ferrule connections. But um, that's on the wish list. It is not coming 
any time that I know of. No comment, so. but maybe maybe at the maybe in like twelve months we'll be sitting talking about what the best product from last year was and that'll be on there. That would be awesome. I'd be a huge fan of that. I might <laughs> I might get rid of every other rod that I have. If you if they if they came out with like a T two S freshwater or T two F series. T two F T two F I might uh I might get rid of every other rod that I have. <laughs> That would be sweet. I hope we can do it. It's there's some manufacturing challenges though. Sure. I get that. So. Well, moving on to something way more interesting than rods. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, well, this was, this was yours. Why don't you bring this up? Cause I don't know a lot about it. Yep. Uh, so I just, just heard that SA and Rio are now offering half size tippets. Um, Trout Hunter has been doing it for a while. There, you know, I'm sure someone has seen five and a half X, six and a half X. They've been doing it forever. Um, but yeah, they, they've been doing it for a while. I used to actually buy the half sizes in between all of my like SA or Umpqua spools yep. and fill it in with Trout Hunter. Yep. But now SA and Rio are on board. Uh, I don't think Umpqua is doing it or has plans to, but. Uh, why don't we just ask, what do you think about half size tippets? You know what? I, so I have been a big trout hunter guy for a, a while. Uh, when I was guiding a lot, using a lot, you, you know, using it a lot. I, I used to be pretty big on trout hunter and I don't know if it's a mental thing, but I loved the half size spools because, and I don't know, maybe it's a marketing ploy just to get me to buy more. But when you're in that headspace and you're like, man, what size tippet do I go with? Do I go with four or do I go with five? Boom. There it is. Four and a half. Yep. <laughs> like yep. every, every time. Um, I'm on the same, the same train. Like, yeah, I, I don't think the fish can, I don't know, maybe they can, but I don't think they can tell a half size difference. I, I do believe they could tell a full size difference. <clears throat> yeah. But man, the mental it, ability to be like, Oh yeah, I got just this little edge. I think I and I think too we've talked about it so many times that the biggest thing for fly fishing is just the confidence, the confidence of what you're fishing. Mm -hmm. And man, it's like, man, do I want to do 6x on this dropper? That seems really low. But, uh, maybe I want to do 5, but there it is. There's five and a half for you. Yep. I I actually I did I ran out of spools of the half sizes faster than I ran out of spools from the standard sizing because i think i got in my head so much with that i would ask myself all the time where oh well okay i'm you know i'm, I'm between three and four four and five five or six anyways i like them yeah. i like them maybe this it's would be maybe a great it's a great place for that <laughs> this would be a great place for that meme i post on my story today did you see the dumb and dumber one no but i do love that can we can we you, you do that at the end of the pull it up right now and just watch it I'm gonna get you. Uh -oh. oh yeah. I don't know how, but I'm gonna get you. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how. But I'm gonna get you. That's this four and a half X. That's four and a half X is out. <laughs> but you, you, yeah. you fish all sorts of small stuff out out in Colorado too, don't you? Like do you, I used to fish a lot more of it, yeah. Do you use a lot of like like six and a half, six X? I ref I just personally refuse to go past six X. Yeah. Uh that's probably there's probably days that that keeps me from catching some fish, but uh I did used to use a lot of five and a half X and four and a half X, but yep. um yep. I like the idea. I don't know if it's a marketing ploy or if it's just what what it is, but I like it. <clears throat> cause generally yeah, it's at the another, end, yeah, at the end of the, it, I mean, generally when I'm buying tippet, cause I, I'll just order it, you know, from the websites or whatever, I'll just go, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, add to cart, <laughs> just put all of that. Like I, I just buy the entire rolls and just toss the old ones. So that I'm just oh, always, right. that's yeah. what I do. So if I guess any of those companies that decide to add halves are going to get me, are going to hit me with an extra four or five spools of tippet per year. Well, probably an extra 10 per yeah, year. Another, another uh, couple hundred bucks. Probably an extra 20 per <clears throat> year. Once you factor in nylon, I guess. Cause I do, cause I buy like the fluoro, I have streamer and I have nylon. Yeah. So I've got like three rolls of tippet that I use. 
That takes up half the space in my fishing bag. That's right. Yeah. The majority of my fishing bag is tippet. (laughs) (laughs) Well, is that the important connection? Well, what what else you got Uh, for us? Yeah, let's move on. Uh, Fish Pond just announced a bunch of, I don't know if they're calling them new packs or just revisions to their existing packs. But the the one that I'm most excited about is the little bit of organization they've added to the submersible waterproof packs. How come um, no other company has, like, I mean, they I know they've had them forever, but no submersible pack has very much organization in the middle of it. And I, and I cannot figure out why. I think this is my personal opinion. I think it's because they want to meet a price point. And the submersible packs are already expensive. I think that Thunderhead is yeah. like two fifty for a hit pack. Yeah. It's a lot of money. And then they're trying to make it as cheap as they can, but you know, the the durability and reliability still has to be there. But then you go adding organization inside, that's gonna be a three hundred, three hundred and fifty dollar pack. So uh, I don't know, but they've they figured out a way to do it. I actually haven't looked at the pricing, whether it's an add-on. I think it's an add-on. So you might be paying another 30 or 50 bucks to buy the organization. 100% worth but, that. Uh, <clears throat> oh, totally agree. I but don't have a waterproof pack point. Like specifically for that reason. that they're, All of them are just bags that you just connect to yourself with some straps. Yeah, like it's just it, a cavern. Yeah. And you just, it, you toss so, something down, like you pull off a bobber because, you know, you're mad and you're not going to bobber fish anymore and you throw it in there. You're never finding it again, ever, until the end of the season when you dump yep. it all out upside down. You dump the whole thing out, yep. yep. And then there's like 26 yep. bobbers fall out of the bottom of it. And you're like, what, where were those? Two minutes ago when I yeah. looked for them. Um, exactly. Yeah. I, I I'm really excited about that. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's great. I can't believe that hasn't been done sooner than 2022, but what a time to be alive. We finally got what a, time. a couple pockets and a waterproof bag. We've welcome, got some dividers. Welcome to the future. We are in the future. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess one other thing on those packs is they went with a new zipper um, that there's no teeth on. It's kind of like a robust Ziploc bag type deal. But that's nice because I don't know if you've ever used those tie zip, the, those burly zippers that are fully waterproof submersible. Mm-hmm. They, they suck. If one tooth gets messed up, like the zipper is ineffective. Yeah, my well, they're not doing that true zip on waders yet. They're only doing it on like the packs and stuff. But I have the zipper on my on my waders. Love that. Um, but the true zip thing is really cool. It's a lot easier to use. You know what I found too is like you know the like Yeti how they have that zipper thing. When you stick your hand down in it, it freaking if you especially if you do it a lot it like grabs your like freaking rip up your your like hand your when hair. you're putting it down in there but, oh the the tie zips yeah yeah the yeah. the one with the teeth like those because they're yep. really abrasive because they have that like they lock better mm-hmm. and man it'll chew up the back of your hand or whatever if you're reaching in and out of in and out of one of those all day but yep. I yep. Re- I really like that cool. true zip thing. I there's a there's a Sims product that we've used that uh, I really like that had that true zip and I really like it. Sweet. Right on. There we go. Well, that's all I have for products. Okay. Move well, on to questions. There's some exciting stuff in there. There's some stuff to look forward to. <clears throat> Definitely. Um so we're now on to the questions. Again, really appreciate the guys those of you who did reach out and, and girls. A guys and girls who ask us questions uh huge huge f- uh help for us to kind of also be able to gauge what we're our audience level kind of who we're talking to with this podcast but really appreciate the questions um brent you want to tell us what questions we got yeah uh we we got three uh, three main ones um Two of them kind of overlap, so I'm just going to answer those both in the same same answer. Uh, we'll start with that one. Uh, we've got a, a guy and a girl actually talking about seven weight and sink tip lines. Uh, one specific has an IMX Pro seven weight, which is an awesome streamer rod. That's a freshwater streamer taper. Um, he says he fishes it mostly on the Colorado River in the South Platte in Colorado. 
and he's got a Rio in touch 15 foot sink tip with a six inch per second sink. Uh, he is saying that he doesn't think it loads the rod enough. Wondering if he should go with more grains. Uh, I would be curious if he's fishing a true seven weight line or if he's fishing like uh, maybe he's got a six weight line on there. Do they run? I don't know, sometimes does, they do it. Does Rio offer, do you buy those as grains or do you buy them as weights? I think Rio offers a few you can buy as grains that are that are specified as grains as on the grain box. Weight. Obviously, there's a grain window for each right, rod right. weight, but um, I would be curious what grain weight he's using there. But yeah, if if he thinks that it's not loading the rod enough, then you've got two options. You could bump up in grain weight, go up like forty or fifty grains, or you could get a more aggressive taper. So I'm not sure which taper he's using there. And I'm not super familiar with Rio's lines. But uh, one example of a good taper that I know loads the rod well is the Rio Big Nasty and the SA Titan Long or Sonar Titan tapers. So any of those more aggressive lines should load that rod just fine, especially with a decent sized streamer on there. Maybe with a Wooly Bugger, it might feel a little bit light, but... Um, yeah, I was going to say, try... it depends on what fly, maybe, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if he's using a lot yep. of single hooks, smaller stuff, you know, maybe bumping up a grain weight. But if you're using a lot of bigger flies, I would say maybe try that those bigger tapers. <clears throat> yep. Yep. I think... It, yeah, so... Yeah. Go ahead. That, oh, I was going to say, I think... What did we say? What line do you say was currently using Rio? He's using a Rio with a 15 foot sink tip. Rio which... Rio sells a more aggressive taper than what he's using. That is a sink tip. I can't yeah, remember what they, it's called. Yeah, they sell the big nasty in a sink tip, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And SA's Sonar Titan is a pretty aggressive taper, but the Titan Long in a sink tip, that one is really aggressive as well. That's so, the better of the two. Um, IMO. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but um <laughs> that's that's so, my personal i also opinion. like the i also like the full sinking lines like the sonar titan series which is a full sinking line there's no floating part about it but um anyway those would be my two or three suggestions go yep. with a more aggressive taper or depending if it's already an aggressive taper maybe for your casting style you want a a little bit heavier of a of a line yeah you should be able to get it done with a true seven weight aggressive line. Yeah. And it, in what episode was that Brent that we talked about uplining and, and lining true line sizes for rods? I believe that was episode four. Okay. Click yep. somewhere around here. We're going to put a link back to that other one so that you can get some more Intel on that. If you want. Yep. Uh, he was also, also saying uh, all-purpose Colorado streamer setup. He has a six weight with a floating line. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great secondary streamer line. Uh, the only thing you need to worry about with floating lines is some of them aren't that aggressive. If you're throwing a bigger fly, that they'll they'll have a little bit of trouble turning over that bigger fly. Uh, you can either combat that with a really heavy butt section on the leader, like. 40 pound butt section on the leader or make sure you're using uh like an sa infinity or a a little bit more aggressive I, I don't know what rio's more aggressive one is you could use big nasty floating but that might get a little heavy no there's anyway. no they, they make like a nymph one and they, no power isn't it called like the power or something rio's. that's airflow isn't it huh. i don't know i'm not sure <laughs> Uh, but one I know for sure that works all right is SA Infinity or SA Anadro. Anadro is pretty heavy though. So depending what rod you have, if you have a medium or slower action rod, that Anadro will be too much. But if you have a fast action rod, shouldn't be too, too much. Cool. There we go. <clears throat> uh, did we answer? That was in line with one of the girl's questions. She <clears throat> wanted 
Oh, a good hopper dropper. She has for a good hopper dropper or nymph rig, possibly a four to five weight as well. Mm -hmm. Man, there's a couple ways you can you can do that one. You could do a, for if you're going to do hopper dropper, I think a four weight's too small. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. If you're if you're throwing any heavier droppers, but uh, I would go with a five weight. I actually really like a ten foot five weight for hopper droppers and nymphing on bigger water. Um, it gives you more mending, better roll casting, and you can high stick further. And with a hopper dropper, you're not trying to throw super tight loops. So you can open them up a little bit. Yeah. So 10 foot five weight and then go with the nymphing line if you're doing the hopper dropper because you got to be able to mend. Yeah. So SA infinity <clears throat> type deal. I use a, for big water, I use a six weight. I like a softer six weight for it, but that nine and a half foot five weight What's it? The NRX Tailwater Special, five ninety five. That one. Yep. My my go to is a nine foot six weight though, for that for hopper droppers and big nymph rigs. I use the exact same rig for that, and I do that heavy nymph line, that uh, airflow nymph indicator, whatever. It's got a huge head mm -hmm. on it. Great for being yep. able to bomb big big double, you know, big dries or like salmon flies even even dropping something off of that but then it can also handle handle those really heavy nymph rigs as well that's my good we need to get you we need to get you trying a 10 foot five weight that's quickly becoming my favorite like hopper dropper nymph rod from the boat hmm. mm -hmm. you're getting really close six to, weight is dead you're six getting is dead. you're getting really close to euro status right there no sir do you euro <laughs> nymph it off the boat I have your own imp from the boat. Oh my god! They're gonna cancel yeah. us. They're gonna cancel us with what oh, we're no. up to here. Cut that! Cut that! <laughs> out. Cut that! There's the criti <laughs> there's the criticism we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Okay, we got one more quick question. Uh, a little bit of a backstory to it, but basically the two questions we got out of this one was: What indicator would you recommend? And the reason he's asking is because he's fishing a river that has apparently a lot of varying speeds and varying depths. That is um, tough. That's one of the probably, toughest things, especially if you're like trying to conquer that on foot without having multiple rods in a boat, which I'm, I'm, he's not, I mean, he's, he is on foot, but, mm -hmm. uh, having multiple rods rigged up in a boat is the best way to do it. But if you are waiting, it is tough. Um, which, what indicator do you like? I've been using the, uh, what are they? The airflow, the, airlocks what are they called airlocks the yeah the... yep with yep. the little screw cap mm -hmm. those are way easier to adjust depth because be, you're going to have to adjust depth for every run or every hole you're fishing right um there's no way to get around that yet yeah so. yeah but have you seen the new what's it called oros oh is that it's the one where the, the whole thing breaks apart and then you it's just the yeah. air, it's the airlock but the whole it goes straight through the middle of it yeah i've seen that i don't know what the point of that is it sounds cool. I'm not saying it's it looks worthless. great to me because the one problem I have with the airlocks is that I always lose the freaking cap. Always, like I drop it in the river ten times out of ten. Yep. Yep. So I end up just throwing streamers, but because um, <laughs> you can't nymph without a bobber. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I, I would say the airlock or the oros; those are probably the easiest to adjust depth, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not the most sensitive if you're fishing like really finicky fish. Yeah, you may have to go with different ones one of my go-to's if i think if you are fishing finicky fish is the rainy's telestrike indicator have you seen it i have not this is kind You're of some big nymph guy i am a big nymph guy this is kind of some like <laughs> dark web stuff you gotta like dig down in the bottom of the of the fly fishing internet to find it it's got a tippet ring on it and it's essentially just a big ball of like ep fiber so float super well Problem is you do have to grease it. If you don't, if you don't have floating or whatever, and if you catch a big fish that's fighting underwater a lot, then you got to, you know, you got to retreat it just like you would a big dry. So it's kind of a bummer, but, and then it also has this little plasticky indicator piece that sticks straight up through the EP stuff. So really cool hmm. design because you can use it as a tippet ring. You can tie your tippets directly to it and then it sits, you know, up above. Or you can thread it just like a normal indicator where you thread the loop through and fold it over. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you can, you could easily, you could move it that way. 
For finicky fish, that thing works great. And the coolest thing about it is that it'll float sideways when your flies are still sinking. But once your flies reach kind of the bottom and it pulls this way, it'll pop it straight up. And you can actually kind of see it'll go like this before it sinks. Technically, I hmm. tell a strike. I don't know. Yeah. But it takes a little less oomph to get it down. So I think you can probably that pick up strikes. Be, that could be a really helpful thing, not only for catching fish, but for learning where your flies are. Yes. Because one thing I think a lot of people struggle with is they cast their flies out and they see their bobber is like on the seam they want and they think their flies are getting down really really fast well a lot of times it takes two or three maybe four seconds depending on the hydraulics underneath for your flies to get down to the correct depth that you think they're at yeah if you're so if you're having not that tip up yeah yeah that's big yeah that would help if you're not catching fish your flies are not getting to the bottom of that hole just generally Probably. speaking from yeah. from my experience so that could be a good tool for people that yeah. maybe don't know yet like i got lucky fishing cheeseman where you weren't catching fish unless your flies were on the bottom and not any with any regularity anyway so i learned to have to i wouldn't even watch the bobber i'd put on like an egg or a worm that i could see underwater and use that as my indicator there you go so like i had to learn very quick where my flies were in the water column and it, sometimes it takes a long while yeah. to get those flies down. It does. Well, cool. So I like those. I like those rainies ones. They're not my favorite. My my favorite is just the airlock. Maybe this yeah. new. Maybe this new one though. If that if that solves the stupid little thing that I have to do with the airflow or the airlock ones, I need to try that. Yeah, but, without losing the cap. Yeah, but. Uh, those Rainey's ones are kind of cool. Figured I'd throw out another one that I have used that I, I also like it. It, I quit. I, I honestly, I think I used to use it a lot before I was guiding. And then once I started guiding, I just, I had to switch over to the airlocks. It was just so easy. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds kind of like the New Zealand indicator, but maybe a little bit easier to better. use than those. Cause those things, I mean, they're so cool and they work really well, but dang, they're a pain in the butt to use. And to adjust the depth. Yeah, you got to have the little tool with the little, you got to make sure you got all the little plastic pieces. If, if you guys aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, you should go look one up. They, you need an engineering degree to use that thing. Uh, it is, it's an awesome indicator, but man, I, I'm too stupid to use it. No, I just can't oh, keep track surprised. of all the little, I mean, you got to buy like the replacement hoses to use and then you, you know, it, you got, you still have to treat it. Um, yeah, it's there's a time and a place for it. And they they don't they will not float really really big nymph rigs either. Yeah. They won't. But like a double girdle with weights and stuff is with fast water you just can't you they they don't work. But anyways, yeah. no, there we go. But you're probably not too concerned about being stealthy if you're fishing a double girdle with lots of split shot. I I'm all about the stealth. <laughs> <laughs> just like to slip, slip that thing right in that hole. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. All right. The, but the best way to fish variable depths is just to have a, I think, is to have an indicator that you can adjust r really easily or uh, and make sure you have a leader that kind of works with that to be able to adjust it quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not fun. A bunch of knots on your leader doesn't help. No. And it is, it's not fun, but, uh, man, I... You know, I've I've been the I've been the victim of it too. You're 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 walking. You're like, man, I'm I'm not going to change the depth for this run or whatever. Uh, if you get in that mindset, you're not going to catch as many fish. Definitely, yeah. if you will get in the mindset of, all right, depth changed. I'm changing my I'm changing my or my indicator or whatever for every new mm -hmm. depth. You'll you'll be a lot more successful. Yep, and change your depth before you change your flies. Yes, it's way easier. Yep. Yep. So. There you go. Good questions. We appreciate uh, you guys that sent those in. Yeah, very, very much appreciated. And hopefully they were helpful to some of you. Keep them coming. Maybe they weren't. What if they weren't helpful for, for us? What, what should they do? That would be a perfect place for the negative feedback. Give us like a thumbs down on the video. Don't and do that. All Please. caps comment. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you guys are worthless. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> We're really trying to make this thing successful. We we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why Tim hasn't put it on the podcast yet or put it on the Apple yet. Cause he knows it. He knows that's the kind of comments we're going to get. Yeah. He's like, dude, you guys are going to get a thumbs down. Oh, gosh. Uh, all right. Move on to a, a thumbs up. Uh, we we're this week. We are not doing a video. I'm not doing a video meme of the week. What? That's, what, yeah. that's the only it's thing that gets straight- me through the week. <laughs> no, it's a picture this time, and oh, it's okay. gold. Okay, let's see. Adam, I, you actually found it. Uh, I am pulling it up right now. So I'll read it for those that are listening, and then we can discuss after. Why don't you show it, it for is, the people that are watching first, and then... Yeah, the people are going to see it. Okay. Well, shouldn't you do that first for the people who are watching before the people listening? It's up on the screen right now. No, it's no, it's not. This is future time. We're editing it in. Oh, holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the well, this is the future. <laughs> We're in the future. All right, it's up on the screen. All right, all right. Here, here it is. It's as you can see. Yep, here it is. Adam's holding it. <laughs> we'll teamwork hold it. Uh, for those of you that are only listening, there's a picture of, I don't know if it's actually John Daly, but it looks like John Daly. He's got bleach white hair, a bleach white beard, some awesome NASCAR sunglasses, and a cigarette at, hanging out of his mouth. He appears to be on a golf course. It, it is, the caption it, John is John Daly for the people. <laughs> God, what a hero. The caption is uh, from Hollywood. Fly fishing is a great way to relax, de-stress, and enjoy the majesty of nature. But the response is, me trying to calm down after spooking the bejesus out of a nice fish with a shitty cast. <laughs> and then you see the image of John Daly's <laughs> ripping a heater. And the the best, oh, it, this was posted by No Kipe on Instagram. The The funniest part of all of this, I think, or is their comment, which is, these Marlboro Reds are medicinal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's that's so much gold. That's a that's yeah, a great. It's picture. medicine. Oh, it's just, so accurate. Just vi- that that is exactly it how is. I feel. Yeah, that's exactly I how I feel way, when I do that. I, yep. Oh man, you just bomb your cast and pile it yep. up right on top of the fish. See you later. Yep. It's that's never happened to me, rice. but I've seen it happen plenty of times. <laughs> Yeah, happens happens with buddies that I fish with. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've never done that. Yeah. So <laughs> now, do, can oh, you man. can you thumbs down that picture? Just be like, yeah, I, that's not really relatable to me. Yeah, I don't I don't relate with this picture. I've never had a bad cast. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> I don't know. You, <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? Oh gosh. Well. I All right, well, next it. week it'll just be me on the podcast because I'm not <laughs> inviting Adam back. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, what I think that is that's the end of our that's the end of our fun podcast today, isn't it? Yeah. That's the rest it of the is. docket. Well And we actually this is less than an hour. Look at us. We did even good. with all the dicking around and joking around. We did good. You're welcome, guys. Yep. Well, uh we really appreciate you watching. Please reach out to us on Instagram at ramble and fly or hop over on youtube and leave a comment on a video uh for questions or topics that you would like to have us answer or cover thank you so much for watching hop on over to uh the youtube as well to see this meme that probably did not not come across as funny <laughs> listening to it on spotify <laughs> if you want to hop over and see the meme you need to do that uh we'll also pop up a couple of pictures of these different packs and things like that that we talked about for the products uh on the youtube channel as well we'll try to get some posts up on instagram as well with them so how about that yep. and if you would do us the favor i'm gonna do it subscribe to the channel follow us on instagram like and comment if you can it's it's true. Everyone says it. It does help the channel and it, it really tells us what we're doing good and what we're doing bad. Yep. And we we do want to we do want to be helpful to the most amount of people we can and see where this thing can go. For so, sure. If it's help if it's helpful, if you found anything in here helpful, please do us a favor. This is free for you to access. Just do us do us a simple favor back and 
go subscribe to the YouTube or follow us on Instagram. Yep. All right. Enough of that. Whew. Got the <laughs> YouTuber stuff done. out of the way. I feel like, I yep. feel like a YouTuber when I do that. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like and subscribe. That's what they, that's what they we all could, sound like. I know we need to make some epic montage of like Ooh, subscribe to on be, the river. Oh, that'd be sweet. We need that. <laughs> you know, to be a true YouTuber though, I feel like we would need to get sponsored by like a credit card. All the big YouTubers are sponsored by some sort of credit card. Yeah. Or like some CBD company. Oh, yeah. We need a good CBD company to get sponsored by. Five Hour Energy, CBD. Do they have that? Something like Isn't that, that the opposite of what Five Hour Energy is? It's a yin and yang. It fits together. <laughs> yin and yang. Five Hour Energy, if you're listening, we need uh, <laughs> we need whatever that is. <laughs> All right. Well. On that note, we appreciate you guys following along. <laughs> thanks, bye. Yep, thanks for coming along. <laughs> if you made it that far, there's a there's a little nugget to leave you on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. I'm stopping.